Three. Okay. I'm gonna try something a little different today. I haven't worked on white, my God, for, maybe I've only done two in the whole couple of years I've been doing this uh, on white. And I thought, let's try white because I know a lot of artists. So, you know, I, I can get into my wonderful comfort zone of my soft uh, kind of gray, middle gray tones, but we'll go with white. The other thing is somebody asked a long time ago, I don't know who it was, if I would do a figure that was backlit. And in going through a lot of my old photographs, I found this one that I shot in a hotel room of Anna. And I thought, I love the composition of it, the light and dark, and there's some medium tones. So we have basically light to dark. That's our basically two values. Then we have a lot of subtleties, all within the dark. 90%, I would say 98% of all the subtleties are put within the dark. There's a few subtle things happening on the edge from the backlight, and we're gonna warm that backlight up too. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sketch it out. We're gonna start kind of with this. This is kind of slightly off center, so it's maybe about here. We're gonna, that's gonna come down about here, and we're gonna bring the head in about here. Okay, now I look for proportioning. So one of the things that I would do is I would say, I want the head maybe, oh, about this, this shape. I'm not crazy about that brush I'm drawing with either. I'm gonna get more of a flat, that's a bright, um, it's a small bright, but it's a bright, and I much prefer sketching with the flat. Wish I could tell you why, because it's no big secret, I just prefer it. Um, so we're going to go down, we're going to get the hair, and press the hair, and it comes down above the halfway point, somewhere down in here. And the face is going to happen. Probably gonna make it, I'm probably making it a little too large. So we're gonna go the bottom of the head, it looks to me to be about here. And I could be wrong. I think I might be a little off. Let's make it a little higher. And then we're gonna get the other part of the head that comes out in here. We're gonna get the back side of this with this little piece of light, even more, maybe more like that. Um, which is gonna bring this whole thing around. And we will keep keep drawing. We go here, we go down. Now about, right about here is about midpoint. Now there's still more here. Now midpoint is about here. So about there is gonna be midpoint, right? And then we got some hair sticking out below. That would be the breast down arm, hand on the table. These are all approximation and drawing. We, we correct, always. It, with drawing, I said the same thing I would say with painting. Assume like you know what you're doing, but as, I mean, draw like you know what you're doing and uh, assume you may be wrong. Not that you are wrong. Because I want to get that this shape and size. So as I stand back, it looks pretty good. This looks a little short to the head, so I could probably, if this is going to be the hair, probably raise that head a little bit, but we'll see. Now we're going to come in the front of the body, down here. There's another arm. We get the neck is about here. We get the neckline in the dress. Other hair. The other at about this point below her chin, which is, I'm, I'm just about right, son of a gun. Love it when that happens. We're gonna come in. About there. I don't know if I have the head wide enough, but, and then at about this point is where that arm intersects. And then if I go straight up, it intersects with the back of the hair. And that's how we find our alignments and which helps you immensely with proportion. We're gonna to go to the back of the chair. It's gonna be about here. It's gonna break over. I'm gonna lose some of the bottom, which I don't mind.
and the hand comes the other hand comes right here, right below that hand. Let me stand back. Portions look okay. I don't feel that I'm way off. Front of the hand, back here. Yeah, I'm up. okay. Thought I might be short. Now that's this is getting lost in shadow. Then we have the hand kind of lining up almost with where the knee is, and then it disappears. And then the back of the chair is going to come out about here, and then down, about here. And that's about right. So let's see if we get a little, little more information into this, where an eye is. I try not draw the eye as a linear shape. Just get the kind of, because we almost don't see it that way. We know it. We know what a, an eye is like that. We know an eye is like that. But that isn't how we see it. And as uh, Richard Schmidt, paint what you see, not what you know. And the other eye, the angle. Look at that angle. The two eyes. So although one is here, that angle goes this way. So the other one falls about about here and then the front of the hair and then the mouth so we have basically the head in there all right it's it's kind of roughed in but now we want to start to get shapes because once we have contours which is what this is then we have to go with shapes and i'm going to stay with this dark shape first so uh my my palette today is not that dissimilar that it usually is it's um let's see it's titanium white and also a little bit of radiant white mixed together um i have and that just happened to be how i picked them up it's not for a specific thought i have um Naples yellow, I have yellow ochre, I have a little bit of, uh, what is it, uh, burnt sienna, I have a little bit of cat orange light, uh, not, I'm probably not going to need that, I have some alizarin crimson, which I will get to use, ultramarine blue, sap green, I don't know if I'm going to use much sap green, and uh, asphaltum, which I am going to be using, because I'm definitely going to be needing the, um, darkness of that but I don't want it to be I'm going to add a little bit green and brown to that as we start to lay it in up in here okay so it's got a little bit of green and brown laid into that color a little bit on the, the dry side I want it to flow easier so I added just a touch of turf back of the head we're going to go down yeah about here a little more turf a little more green a little more asphaltum And add a little blue and asphalt into that, and we'll come in. I could probably mix a little bit of alizarin into that color if I want. Warm it up. Yeah, I think I like that. You probably can't see stuff like that on the screen because the screens just aren't as quite that sensitive. But uh, I, I just warmed it up with a little bit of alizarin, and it did help. So we're going to go up here. We're going to kind of lose. This is going to really start to tell me how my sh my proportions are, because you we read we draw proportions in line, we read proportions in shape, because we don't read lines. We just think we do because for so many years, as a drawer, any of you guys that and most of you pretty much begin that way as a drawer. Like I have for too long, I can tell right now that arm, this arm here. Can move about here. Okay. That's going to create a better proportion. But what I'm going to do is take that same color and get kind of where the bottom of the arm is. It disappears into the hand. And we'll get the front of that dress in there. And in doing so, we're getting all these wonderful darks. And these darks are thin.
I don't know what she did right here. And this dissipates into the chair. And blue, asphaltum, and alizarin. Those are my three colors I'm using. A little more blue. That just felt real red to me all of a sudden. get lost a little bit. Let's kind of do the same with the hair. Warm it up a little bit with a little, uh, just the asphalt and I'm not gonna use. And if I lose that edge, I don't care because it was wrong anyway. Remember? I'm not assuming I was wrong. I'm realizing I was wrong. Big difference. Assumption and realization. Now we can really double check the shapes. Standing back. Okay. I have her head too small. I kept making her head smaller. Just fine. We'll make it bigger. I'm going to bring a chin down here. And that's going to make this come down about here, which is fine. More asphaltum. If it's dark, make it part of the darks, okay? That's about right. And that's gonna be about right, right about there. So, so I don't get confused. I have a little scribble line in there, but I'm just gonna take a little bit of the uh, a little tone off that too. Okay. Now let's, Jesus, as long as I've done that, I kind of like what I just did. So I'm going to do this. with my paper towel and let's lose some of this chair can come out, out about here okay so we basically have got kind of the overall dark laid in um, there's a few in between tones. There's some, there, see the lights coming from behind. So it's illuminating a little bit of this back in here, which I do want to pick up. And it gets a little bit lighter. So I'll take a little white to the color I was using and a little bit of the green. Those look to me to be the closer, maybe a little blue and mix it back in with a kind of dirty brown. And we'll kind of come right about here. And that gets a little lighter. So I'm going to take some Naples yellow this time and put it right here. Whoops, that's, I don't mind that color. I want, to get, I want to be bolder with it. There we go. Nah, I want it all the way out here. I want it out here, down here. And we'll go back to the darker, the blue and the brown. over a little bit more there let's let's call it okay it's not but let's call it okay a little darker back here so i'm going to take some a little bit of the uh, asphalt and, and bring it back in okay all right i'm going to go back into the face a little bit here i think what i'm going to do i'm going to paint a little different this time just i'm painting with turp and we're drawing with lights and I'm just removing some paint.
This is a number four flat, by the way. With some turp on it. If you get too much turp, it doesn't work. I had I had too much turp there, but overall it's not too bad. Yeah, let's see if I like it. It's not far enough over. I don't it needs to be over here more, which means which is okay because I I'm just moving things around. I want to compare my shapes. That head size looks almost a little too large. Just and I couldn't tell till I stood back, which means I need to come up here and a little in here. Okay, so I'm gonna. You notice I've left all this alone. Oh, you know what I could do? Of course you don't. Uh, I'm gonna take it from right about here. Bring the edge of that table down and bring it across. There, that's good. Okay, there's a glass on it, but we'll get it's gonna be about in here. Now it's gonna be about here. Okay, and we'll put that in a little bit. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I'm gonna take my large brush, this, and I'm gonna start to establish a little bit more definition in where the edge of the hair is comes down a little further, cuts in a little, about here, down. It's probably, I brought it down too much, but it, because the eye is gonna sit back right about in there, and this eye is gonna sit about in there. Okay, and I am gonna take a let me see, I'm looking for one of my really nice sables. Here we go, it's a nice rosemary uh, sable. And we're gonna start model a little bit in the face, cause that's really, and you almost can't see. I can see, but I don't know, you can probably. So I'm taking a little um, cat orange. I'm gonna keep it very warm. A little bit of a asphaltum. I'm gonna start about here. A little bit of medium on it mixed in with that because it wasn't sitting on top. Now it is. A little bit more, maybe of the um, asphaltum. I guess that's coming off. I. I Stood back and kind of glanced in the camera just to see it. Pretty good. I put a little bit of cheekbone, so I put a little lizard and little blue back into that color to darken it. Cheekbone's got to get a little lost right about in here. And one of the reasons I'm using a sable is this is very wet paint here. All right. And what a sable will allow you to do is lay your paint on top and not push it into it as much. So it's a little bit of a soft kind of an approach here. A little bit more, there we go. I got. I put a little bit more um, yellow ochre into it. We wanna get, I wanna keep things more lost than found. The finding part of this painting is gonna happen more towards the completion. light touch, you see that? Very light, because I, there it goes. It's pretty good, it's still got a little bit of a bounce. I'm gonna bring a beautiful cool in to light the face. So we're gonna keep the shadows very warm. Excuse, yeah, uh, everything that is in the shadow side, I should say, is very, very warm, where everything that is gonna, the backlit is gonna have a little bit of coolness to it, even though I'm gonna keep this kind of yellow, in the yellow range, I should say. Back to the asphalt in the darker color. Okay, asphalt with a little bit blue, darker. And I may 
hunt for that eye a lot. Because I'm not, I, it isn't not drawn in. And you can actually stand back and begin to feel whether you've got the right look to that, which I don't. And you just, you fuss with it until you have the right look. Okay? So you don't just kind of put it in there and say, well, I've got it. One of the things that I see uh, painters do sometimes is they're too satisfied too quickly. And I, I, won't, I won't put that on everyone, but I have seen that where individuals will look and it's like, if it's kind of in there, it's good, it's done. I don't need to do any more with it. Um, and that's, that's a definite drawback. A little bit of that cheek comes down here. So I still have that kind of color mixed up. It's not a difficult color. If I do lose it, I can remix it. It's not a difficult color. And we're gonna come right down here. Nope, see I went dark. What happens is I have to have the hair around it. So the actual flesh is going to be more like that color and the hair is going to come in. And I'm going to spend a lot of time on, on the head, more so than I do in other areas. Head might be a little big now. See, it's gone from too big to too, too small to too big. Ah, the perils of drawing and painting. Okay. And we're going to go back with that color. And we're going to put right here. And then down there. And we're starting to, it almost should slightly feel kind of out of focus. And if it is, you're probably doing something pretty good. It's like uh, those of you that have studied photography or actually looked through a lens and the old lens is where you had to bring things into focus. Okay. Think about that because that's how we're painting. We're going to bring things into focus. You know, it's kind of blurry at first. It's kind of, everything's a little fuzzy and it's not as clean and as we really want it to be. Whoop, got a little too red there, but let's, yeah, that got a little too red. That's easy to knock back, it just did. Almost gets lost. We almost, we don't see any definition on the underside of the arm. I'm gonna get a little bit of a hollow here. Uh, the hair is back a little further. Like I said, I will probably fuss on this face quite a bit because it's a very subtle, first of all. Looks like it's basically working. That side of the arm right here. So we cr crispen it up. Sharpen up that edge. Okay, and this dissipates into where the hand is, so it gets quite a bit darker, and a little bit of redness to the dark. So I added a little lizarin. Part of the reason I did that is it's an extremity. 
meaning a hand, a foot, something. Extremities tend to be warmer. Okay. There we go. Now, now let's take, go back to my basic kind of fleshy mixture and have a little bit of warmth right here before that light hits. We need to get this in a little bit too. I don't want to wait on that. A little bit on the thumb. Okay, I need a little bit more medium because it's blending into the paint too much. It's not sitting on top as much as I want it to. Now it is, see? Hopefully you can see that difference. I know it's very subtle, so I'm not sure how much you're able to uh, be able to pick up on your monitors because it's I'm working with such subtle, subtle variations. And I'm gonna do the same thing as we move a little bit more ochre into it. So I want a little lighter. I'm gonna kind of move up here, but that's gonna be cooler. Then it's gonna come over. A little more ochre. And we're gonna find it and lose it. We're gonna find the back of that hair. A little bit right here. Okay, I'm gonna leave everything alone right now. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get some of this background in because we need it, because we need to work color into color. And the only way I can do that, I've gotta get that in. So we're gonna we're gonna go in and we see there's some subtlety and what that is, and I'm gonna mix it right now. I'm just mixing some ochre white with a little bit of the green. That's probably too dark. Yeah, a little darker than I wanted. Let's try this. I threw a little bit of a that feels better. But uh, when I said a little, I threw a little bit of a Naples yellow into it. And yeah, we'll just kind of get. And a little bit more white. And maybe a touch more green. Right here. Whoops, way too dark. Way too dark. Right there, there. And maybe a little more ochre in that green. A little bit more brown into that green. I want it a little, I don't want it to be as prominent. Ochre, green, and, and the earth tone together will eventually get me to the value and color that I'm after. Probably closer to that. That's probably a little bit even too light. Let's try that. A little piece of white right there, there. And we'll go darker just by mixing colors that I have right next to it on the palette. Mix them right into it, a little brown, a little blue. And we just let it go, so it eventually becomes just dark. And I'm not insinuating one color or another, I'm just letting it eventually get dark over here. Okay, so we're actually coming closer to the, to the look, which is what we should be doing as in the painting. We should be sneaking up at the very end, hopefully, It'll look quite a bit like what, I'm not trying to really um, augment and change a lot, maybe get a little bit more structure from what the, um, what the image that I'm looking at is. I'm kind of keeping it very true. But I'm gonna warm that background up as soon as I clean my brush out enough. But I'm warming it up with Naples Yellow. Naples Yellow, Titanium White together. And I'm gonna try and do it without any medium, which means it's gonna be quite dry and thick. So we're gonna go there, we're gonna go there. I 
I was just reading this morning uh, some things about Nikolai Fetchin, and that's what makes me want to not necessarily use so much medium and keep it a little drier. You get a certain kind of a toothy characteristic with that and not as slick and smoothed out. So even though I'm going to go slicker and smooth out more on the head, as we move away from the head, I'm getting a lot more paint characteristics. I like the, I like, uh, that's good color. Naples yellow and white. And I'm gonna rip through a lot of white, so I'm probably I'm gonna have to add more, because I'm not, this is pretty thick paint. There's no, I'm not thinning it out with turp, and I'm not thinning it out with any medium. And we'll kind of Okay, I got, I got the hair coming out a little farther than it does, but I don't care. I kind of want, I'm going to do some, I'm going to do a lot of edge control there towards the end. More white and more of the um, maples. I'll get it right in here. Okay, more white into that maples. Get it down around the table. Lose it into the table. And we'll go back to that kind of gray green color. We need a little definition on the table itself. So a little bit there. It's probably a little darker, but we just lighten it up with white. I can get more colorful if I want, but right now I don't want. I might, I might want, but I don't at present. So it still feels a little big. I think it's more in the hair than it is really in the face. So We'll take this, bring the hair down a little bit more, bring it out a little bit. Probably gonna paint out, paint in, paint out a few times to get to get a, a really nice, an edge that I feel comfortable with. Same here, don't like that edge. Let's do it one more time. Let's bring a little more brown into it. Okay. Now I can see the back of that head is way, out way too far, this. Get rid of it. And I, I was pretty honest in the fact that I think we're going to paint that head a few times. Um, I'm going to go back to my light color. And let's see, we're going to get the top of that table. Crisper edge. This is just where the glass is, so we're just going to kind of fuzz over it. white and that color, and we'll get a little bit of light on the top of that arm. There, and then down a little bit there. Just leave it alone. I don't want to fuss too much with it right now. Now is not the time. A little bit of green in there. little bit of blue and we get a little bit of a interesting shadow color whoops too dark more white okay so we basically I've got everything covered which is where I'd like to be at about this point. Where am I at? I'm about halfway through. You know, a little less than halfway. Okay. So, I've got the time. I'm going to stand back. I'm going to analyze, which I just did. 
and I'm going to try and do a little bit of correcting right in here. Always correct before continuing. A little bit of a cast shadow, warmer, right here. Okay. I'm going to go back to the face. I'm going to be really delicate with it. Um, let me see what other big sables I've got handy that I might be able to use. Here's a nice one. Oh, there's a good one. This one's more... I'm looking for something that I can get real loose edges with, like this. This is almost a big mop. Kind of a nice soft mop. All right, so come in and look at that study very carefully. Now, I can see a little bit, as I, I didn't catch it earlier, but I see a little bit of definition right there. I'm gonna fix the nose. Got a little bit too much of a hook in that nose. But that's mainly because I haven't gone in and done any of the um, lights. We're gonna hold off on that as long as I can. Lights meaning the, the spots that you see there that are a little bit lighter. Now, the lips, a little darker, a little warmer. So I'm gonna take the same color. I added some alizarin and a little bit of asphaltum to that. It probably is gonna to be too colorful, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Nope, not dark enough. More asphaltum into it. That's a little better, I think. Let me step back. Yep. Asphaltum. Back up there. And get a little bit of a pull at the corner. And then we get a little bit of a jolt right here. Really subtle. Don't like that right now. Now, I think I'm getting a glare there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this big brush and I'm just going to wipe down a little bit. Because I think that's part of my prop. There. That feels better. Um, with this brush, I am going to wipe it. And then I'm going to take this color and cut into the hair. And I'm going to cut in there and I'm going to cut in there. And there. Just a step back. I'm going to take a little bit, again, this color. And we're going to cut right. Yeah, it's working. I, I wiped out a little too much of the hair uh, on that last kind of pass, but that's okay. It's not okay, but what the hell? Of course it's okay, because it's not done. It's only wrong if I leave it. Never heard me say that? Only wrong if you leave it. Which means, either it means your painting will never be finished, <laughs> um, or you will be wrong and you will leave it. One of the two. Go back and I'm going to start to carve the corner of that eye. Close value is what happens when you do anything backlit, everybody. The lighting is not obvious on a head, like a Rembrandt head. What happens is everything is going to be kind of close, close value and at close color for that matter in within the shadow range. And I want to lose more of that arm. So that's what you see me doing right now. We're losing more of that arm in the shadow. Okay, and the same with this chair. I should have not. I should not have uh, uh, 
that feel right? Yeah, I think I can bring it out further. Okay. So let's kind of start to do a little bit of refinement, not a lot. I'm looking for some, some of my other uh, wonderful rosemary sables. I've got brushes all over my studio, so uh, there's one, but I don't know if that's what I want. Um, just for the heck of it, I'm going to start... And I think what I'm going to do is I don't put my hand down and mess any of that paint. I think I'm going to grab a, a mall stick, or in this case, it's just a yard stick, a dirty painted yard stick, and use it so I don't rest my hand down. But what I want to do very carefully is paint the bridge of the nose right about here. Bring it down here. Ah, that's okay. Don't want to go too light yet. I want to get more of the hair in, I think, before I get too refined in that face. Um, for that, as it moves over, it gets influenced kind of by a cool. But I'm going to bring a little ochre into the cool that I've used, that these kind of blues. And what we're going to do is we're going to come right in an area like this and an area right okay. so just you notice how it's I, I hope you notice how it's we're building this thing very slowly and it's a lot very, quite different than a lot of the other pieces that I've done uh, where there's so much going on I keep it I keep everything more abrupt in this case it's not I want to look at the back Okay, now I'm just going to get really proportional. How much space is there from the this to the where the hairline starts? And there's more. Not the one sitting on top. I added more medium. As soon as I added more medium, it works. Okay. Now that I've got that working, I'm going to get a little bit more going on. A lot of medium this time. See what I can do here. A little bit more green. I got one a little too red. I'm trying to come up with kind of a this kind of a color. It's kind of has a yellowish red cast, and it starts looks like it goes from like here. That's too yellow. I mean, that's too bold. And at this point, it kind of and then comes from here. Let me get back. I don't like that. I mean, I'll explain why in a second. Um, as soon as I find my other brush. Oh, there it is. My, by my other brush, I meant my dark. Because what I will do just take this, trim it down a little bit, and lose some of this a little bit more than it was. Okay. Feels better. I don't like, this needs to feel like it comes up higher. Okay, so I'd rather get a, have it be lost. I'm gonna add a little bit more warmth to it. And in this case, the warmth being, uh, oh, what is it? Oh, burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt sienna, that same color. I think I added too much, but Let's give it a shot, okay? That's way too light right there. This. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna. I have my dark. This is where you work back and forth until you achieve the feeling, because that's what we're painting in this case. We're not painting really details. We're painting feelings, the feeling of the hair as it 
kind of cascades down and kind of falls across her. And then it comes a little lighter as it goes down. And we'll probably brighten that up just a little bit more in a little bit. Just by pressing down, I'm actually getting it brighter. That's working. Same kind of color. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to change this color. What we want to do is I want to bring the hair from here. Oops, way too dark. Down here. Just barely let that brush touch. Nah. That's okay. It's not good. It's okay. Because part of the beauty of this painting, if I can pull it off, is going to be the feeling of that hair. It's a little too harsh right here. I think I can come back in with a little bit. Now, I have to add more medium to that paint. Because so I, I saw I put down about three strokes and nothing showed up. A little bit lighter. This is where I like to use an egg bird if I've got a big sloppy egg bird. It's not as big as I want, but it's the only egg bird at present I see. I know I've got some giant ones. Um, here's a big sloppy one, I think. Okay, I'll show you why. It works really well in instances like this. Every bristle doesn't hit down equally. And because of that, it feels more like the way hair goes. Okay, so take that same color, same brush, darker. We just go back and we start to eliminate things just by literally brushing over them. So you brush over things a whole lot when you do this kind of hair. It should look effortless, even though it's not. You're doing a lot of work to achieve the right look. But it should appear as if it just kind of happened. Just as I as I like to use the phrase, just almost like it fell off your brush. Okay, so let's go on the back of that chair. We can go a little bolder now. I'm going to go with my bristle number four, and it's kind of a blue green color. So we have these nice subtle, but it's not a bright blue green. So bring a little asphalt and into it, but it's right about there. Feels pretty good. A lot of glare on this, I can tell. Hopefully, if you see it more like this, you see it probably a little bit more like I see it, so. Um, but there is, there tends to be a lot of glare. It's, it's the problem with darks and in doing uh, some sort of photography and showing the darks because it just, it's just the way it is. It just always comes out uh, with a lot of glare. So I hit a little bit of that. Now we hit a little bit uh, right about down, a little brighter, but right about, let's say, there. And then we're going to take white, a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, and we're going to try and hit
Okay. It's probably as much as I want to do with the chair. I don't want to do much more. Um, Got to work on the hand a little bit. Yeah, I wish I could get this back so you guys wouldn't get as much glare. Um, I don't know how to do that other than break that down and get it out to about here. Uh, let's see what we got here. The only way is to hold this hold this out. Um, let's see. I'm gonna do a little ditty. I'm gonna get a little bit more light right there on that hair. Warm it and lighten it. Right. Okay. That actually works. Again, I'm not sure how it's showing up in terms of I'm walking away for a second, so I'll get, get a grab a push pin and see if I can do something here. Help you out a little bit. Because it looks pretty good. I, I but I looked at it on the screen a little bit ago and it looks very glary. So I'm gonna try see if this helps a little bit. I don't know if that did. I kind of pushed it out as best I could. Um, but I want to keep going and then I will, I'll pull it out in the light so you guys can actually see it a little better. But I'm going to work in this area for a little bit. And you can always take... I used to save this for the end, but I'll do it right now. You can always take one or two of the little strands and do a real kind of free, don't do too many. It's, it's like you're drawing hair. One, two, we'll leave it alone. That's about it. Get a little bit of that in there. Okay, let's go back and work on the hand. First thing, let's take this. Shape that thumb a little more. There you go. And the dark shape of the thumb. The tip of that thumb is about there. And get a little darkness. Now, I'm going to go back on those fingers. That first finger comes down here and is about a, right about there, which is going to put that second finger about over here and where I had it in the wrong spot. Best thing to always do with hands, underdo them. But we do have a little bit of, of uh, atmospheric kind of over creep and it's coming about here goes up on the arm, it helps to find that arm, and then disappears. And we want to lose that edge. But it gives you a little bit of the feeling. Now, I might want to push that a little further. In the meantime, we'll go in. I've got one knuckle, second knuckle. Third one is about here. Okay. How's that shaping up? Well, the size of the hand looks good. It's just there's no definition in it. And the only definition is really going to happen with a little bit of that rim light. But this first finger goes down. And about at this point, we could begin to see where the tip is. Same with the second one, which is about here. Which is going to change the shape of the rest of it. Another thing I just noticed. When I, just, every, when I step back is when I notice things, okay? And I noticed that this chin has got to come this way. Okay. Now I want to get to find the edge of that arm simply with that gray green by doing that. And voila, we've got the edge of the arm. And a couple strands of hair 
that overlap it. Okay. Again, if you do too much of that, it's gonna, it's not gonna work. So, go back to my number two a little bit, and I want to fix that knuckle. It sits up about here. So I'm drawing. I'm drawing with shape, reshaping that first finger. Okay. Now here's what you do. To reshape that finger, but I am going to, if I can find my brush, um, add a little bit of light to the top of the knuckle to help define it. Again, I know I'm going to have to rest my hand down, so I'm just going to use this little yard stick, which, it, which is basic. I use it as a mall stick. I just kind of rest it on the side of the painting, and we're going to come in and we're going to show the top of that finger, top of that knuckle right there. And the first finger gets, and it's a cool light, so it's a little bit, got a little bit of blue in it. But it comes down right about there, I think. And the second one, the middle finger, that was the index finger. Now I've got that second knuckle up way too high. But now I could be loose. I could be really, really painty and loose and make that kind of feel normal. But I'm, so I'm a little pre precise in some of these. I want to be loose in some areas and I'm really precise in others. And I am trying to be precise in those areas. She has a watch on too. I didn't catch that earlier. And it's kind of a nice little touch that we can add in here. It's number one, it's very dark at this point. And then it gets a little piece of light, but not much. And that light is very neutral. So it's really almost a no color light. And what it is, is a little bit right there. It's too strong. More brown into that color. And then we'll get the face of the watch down in here. And leave it alone. See how that looks. I can't, I, I, I cannot tell. Um, On the screen, it feels a little off. And by screen, every now and then I get a chance to get back. Anna's not here with me, so I get a chance to get back and look at the. But if you, again, if you look at it this way, it's probably a little more accurate. So I have not put any of the um, feelings of the face in there, but I do want to soften this. So I'm just going to take a clean brush. Okay, that feels good. Let's take, let's get a little bit of a, see how the edge is working. So I'm gonna take, it's a cooler light, but not as light as I want it. I don't wanna sneak all the way up my lightest light yet, but I am gonna come in here and I'm gonna do a little drawing. A little bit on the eyelid. Believe it or not, I do see that. And then below the eyelid, cheek. And this is going to be way too dark. But what it allows me to do is test my drawing. Because I will come lighter. And then we're going to come down on the cheek. Down around before it gets down to the chin. And I can begin to see if it's working pretty well. It's okay. Not as good as I had hoped. Whoop. 
I pressed a little too hard on that, so we'll put it back in position. Comes up on her onto her lower lip, which is up about here. Down on her chin. See, now that looks okay. I just, it's not as pronounced as it needs to be. Also, believe it or not, and it's almost, it's probably impossible for you to see here, but there, I can see the whites of her eye, but it's so dark. It is so dark. It's right about, oh, that's way too strong. But if you look in the other eye, you see the, it's get, it gets a glimmer of light right here. Now, do I have, this one's way too, way, way, way too, too light. It's, it's standing out way too much, in other words. So I want to fuzz that back by pretty much mixing my dark color. Blue and brown. I'm going to go up on it because I, there. That's actually better, believe it or not. And I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to fuss with it much beyond that right now. Just one simple stroke. I went back to the kind of the basic shadow flesh tone, which is a combination of two or three different colors. And I want to clarify a little bit of this, a little bit on the cheekbone. A little bit right here on the corner of the nose. Starting to get some structure in that. My God, that makes me feel good. Still need a little bit more shadow down here. Raise that lip, and we're going to soften. And then get a little pull of almost softness of that color coming right about there. Okay, hold it. Parts I like and parts I don't like. I'll try and explain that in a second. Still haven't pronounced it anywhere near what I'm going to as far as the lights up in here. I'm going to go back back to the hand. Notice how I bounce around. I do that on I do that on all my paintings. I bounce from one area. I I just find if I get too hung up in one area for too long, I end up overworking it and making decisions that really aren't necessary. They're really not accomplishing anything. So I, what I have found in the long run is if I just bounce around a little bit more, and then revisit areas. That hand's working okay. Don't like the far side of it. I wish I almost had a nicer gradation on it. Um, I do want to take that color and just enhance a little bit of this part of the arm right here. Hopefully, I'm probably blocking some of you guys. Okay. I still want to lose areas. So we're going to go back to my big brush. The brown, the blue, which gives me as close to a warm black. If I want, I can add a little um, alizarin to it. And we're just going to go right in here. See how I feel about things. Let's get that glass in. What do I got? I've got about a little over 20 minutes left. So that gives me room to bring up a lot of things. Um, one of the areas that I want to say is that area right there, which is right there. Sometimes those accidents are nice when you get those fuzzball things happening. Okay. Let's go back and start to come down the whole thing. But before I do, so that everything is laid in basically the way I want it, 
let's get that glass in there, a little piece. Very cool, but a little bit of warm. So it's, it's. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put my finger down again. But I'm not going to. You want more lost than found. So I'm gonna find a lot of the glass and then I'll probably end up going back and losing some of it. Probably a little darker than I wanted. Add a little bit more white to it. And then that part reflected. That's starting to work. Probably picking that up too much, I think. It actually reads good from a distance, although uh, there's some things I want to do with it, but I'm going to leave it alone for right now because I can fuss on it longer later. Uh, I do want to do something to that hand because as that hand goes that direction, there's more warmth that shows up in the fingers. And I should have put that in to begin with, and I didn't. feels a little bit better. Does it really make me really happy, happy? No. It makes me happier than I was, let's put it that way. Oops. Okay, go back into the face. Let's start to bring it out a little bit more. So take that where I started a little timid, I'm going to be a little bolder this time. It's a nice... And we're going to start right... Oh! <laughs> How you like that? I laughed at it, because it is kind of funny. Um, but I know artists... I've, I've been in classes where artists freak out when that happens and you know i just tell them hell probably it wasn't that good to begin with um we'll just go back and pre-carve things a little bit maybe hopefully do them better Okay, let's try it again. <laughs> so I will put this up here this time and not on the, I put it on the painting. So head is starting to read more. Bring this down a little lower, drawing-wise. And a little bit more delicate. Oh, I don't like that. Made that ugly. Don't want to make it ugly. I, by ugly, I brought that out too far. So I will go back and fix that. It doesn't bother me as much from a distance as it did up close, but I'm still going to fix it. Just with the hair. That hair is a drawing tool as far as the contour goes.
So every time I rest it on that, it's moving. So I really need to not rest it on the canvas itself. That's not that hard to do. Now we're getting it. I am going to take that flesh color and there's a little bit of light I'm pressing again. Let's put it over here above the eye. I don't know how this is coming off because it's so subtle on the screen. Um, it's actually better than I was kind of hoping for a little bit as far as reality goes. I'm going to go back and soften some of this with my table. You know, I know what colors those are, obviously. It's basically white and Naples. I'm going to take white Naples, and it's got a strong light right there, right there, and right there. Okay. So, the dress has got a little pattern in it. I don't, you guys probably, again, once again, can't see it, but it adds a little touch. Now, it's very subtle. So I'm gonna take this little number two. I don't, I don't, I don't like that one. Then this number two. And I'm gonna take my dark blue and brown together. I'm gonna add just a hint of white or any light color. In this case, I just grabbed white. And I'm gonna maybe a little ochre into that white, huh? And I see a pattern right there. And there. I think I know what this dress looks like. I'm not positive. That is actually helping a lot. <laughs> hope you can, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, I hope you can see that because I don't know if you can. A little bit down in here, but it's not going to be as, as light. So I just added more brown to that color. And I'm just making it up at this point. Uh, she's got a necklace on. That necklace has a little bit of a, of an, uh, I added a little ochre to the flesh tone color and maybe a little bit of green. And it comes right, it's right here. I think that's about right. I don't say that too often, do I? And same, and then it's got a couple little, just like gold always does, depends on the way it's facing and what light's hitting, but it has a couple of spots that stand out. And so when you just take those and you push them just a little bit further, and by that I mean add a little bit more white, maybe little Naples or something, so they go just a little. And there you have the little bit of light. Now, as I stand back, it's working. I mean, I'm not displeased for a change. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know how good it's showing up on screen, but... Um, overall, take some more brown, put some more medium into that too. A little turp, a little medium. When you put it in there, and if it stands out, doesn't work, the first try, just take a clean brush and brush it out. 
And you do that over and over throughout the whole painting, not in any one spot, but literally throughout the whole painting. You're constantly going back and reworking, fuzzing, adding, and you can do that for days. You can do it for hours. You can do it. It just depends upon the overall look. And that, I, I've mentioned this so many times, that intent, knowing the way you want your painting to look when it's completed, all right? How brushy, how refined, how, what, thin to thick. I've got some nice thin strokes in here. Um, so it, all that stuff is gonna come into play and you just have to, it's up to you, I hope it is, it's you're the artist, uh, it's up to you to, to make those kind of crucial decisions as to what what is it the way that I want this piece to kind of come off. You can paint too light, too dark, too light. You can throw color. Like if I want, I don't like that up in here that much, so I might lose that. I might take a little bit of, I grabbed a little cat orange, right? A little cat orange, a little, and I might go a little too strong here. Let me try it. You can try it, see? Too strong. So I don't like it. I kind of kind of knew that was the case, but I did that so that I can take my other color, come back over it. Maybe a little flavor of that's going to come out and add some character that it otherwise wouldn't have. And maybe it doesn't even show that in, but you, what you're doing is you're adding a little bit and you pick up these little tidbits along the way as you paint different subjects, different types of things. And as you do, you add them as you want them. You add these, and they're, for lack of a better word, we can call them tricks. Um, you know, some people call them gimmicks, I don't. A gimmick is something you use over and over and over again where something like a trick that you might learn as you paint is something that you literally, you only um, really come by it and you use it sparingly when it's necessary. Now there's some patterning on the rug. I like the sparse patterning. So I'm gonna actually add that down in here right at this point. And there's a, it's a little bit of a perspective change. One, two, And then the further away it gets from the doorway, because that's where the light is coming from, the darker it gets. So we just, just by adding more brown to it, we can little piece of patterning down there on the ground. It's like the patterning in her dress, which I think is good. I think I could probably have more of it. What do we got? We got not quite 10 minutes. So let's go back and add a little bit more here. And here, maybe here. I'm letting it get not quite as light as it moves up. Now, one of the things I messed up on, but I kind of like the looseness, but I still messed up on it, is it's a little bit of a fold here. So I'm gonna take, try and keep it as fresh as I can and still give a feeling of that fold. And the way that hand interacts, intersects with that dress, which I kept very, very vague, but I'm actually, I actually kind of like it. I don't want to really change it because I think it works pretty well. Um, I'm going to revisit the shape of the thumb, the back part of the thumb, meaning this part right here. Okay. I'm going to revisit the lips. And for that, I'm going to use a sable because when I paint into these areas, those are the times that I want it to be soft. Alizarin. And, and I'm going to do this. Let's Elizabeth and Asphalton.
that's a little bit better. And I'm going to look carefully at the nose and see if there's anything in, within the shadow that I can help it with. I see right, yes, I do. The bridge right here. Where the, where the cheek fuses into the bridge of the nose. I push that out a little bit. Probably a little bit too much. So I clean that same brush. Relatively um, pleased with the way it's working. A little bit of that, more of that neck working. Buzz it into the rest of the paint. So we're getting the, the overall look. There's little color nuances that I see that can happen. Um, I see some warm... happening right about here. On the edge, and it's probably, you know, I always try and figure out why I see things the way they do. And I think what it is, as the light comes around edges, it does all kinds of tricky things. And, you, you know, you have to play with it for a while and almost try, trial and error to get it to do, or to get it to look the way that you think think it should look. It's a cheekbone. A little bit on the chest, but not too much. Oh, boy, what did I do? Why did I pick that color? I picked up color with too much white on it, and it, we don't want it to be stronger, obviously, than the lights on the, um, the necklace. A little softer in here. A little softer right here. This, uh, some of the stuff I'm doing is so subtle, I know it is not showing up because I can barely see it here, but it's making a difference. And that's really what, that's the bottom line. I'm going to, with this and some turp and some medium, get a real loose edge on it so I can pull a couple strokes. Probably too small of a brush. I got it. I should be using the brush way too big because you start picking too much. Oh, the overall looks pretty good. Take more white and more of the ochre. Just off broke a brush, I have no idea what it is. We're just about done. And I am going to bring this to a little bit of a different uh, vantage point in terms of light so you guys can get a better look at it. So you can see it hopefully a little bit more like I see it. Anything else? Eh, I think I'm about done. I don't think there's much more. I mean, there's a lot of little things. This is one of these things that if I look back at it tomorrow or in an hour or two, 
I might see it different that I want to change some things. But for all intents and purposes, at this point, it, it's pretty much working. At least I think it is. Um, now, it's the key is, can you... And painting it at, from here, if I leaned it forward, generally, you can I can change a little bit of a feeling of the light that's happening. And the other way, and I will try it, one, just see if it'll work, is the other way is to hold up a, um, something that blocks the, the top light. So let's see what this looks like. Let's see how we can do it. That's pretty good. That's kind of, that's probably a little closer. So hopefully you guys could, you know, see what I did. Something a little different. Um, try not to repeat myself. Sometimes they're wonderful. And sometimes they're not as wonderful. Um, so hopefully you all got something out of it. I got a painting that I think is pretty good, but time will tell. Um, in any event, I want to thank everybody. Hope you had a uh, great week. Hope you have a great week or two coming up. Um, keep painting, and uh, well, let's get this in position here. There, more like that. So I think you can see it. And if I bring it forward, again, it looks more glary so i don't know if there's any way that we can uh, i know this is being done in video and i'm not sure if there's any way that we can um, improve upon it if so we will and i'll rely on uh scott to do that other than that thank you guys very much um enjoy bye-bye